Hi, I'm Donna Spence and I'm here to interview Winston Truman McKenzie. Now you may wonder, who is that? You might know him as the former boxer or the gentleman who owns the pub with his brothers in Parchmore Road, Thornton Heath, or you might remember him as the one black man in UKIP and wonder why. Whatever your thoughts, let's go and see him. Let's go and interview him. Governor, <laughs> sweetheart, that was amazing. <laughs> Lovely to meet so you. So much about you. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. You know what they say when you see him in, in, in real life. <laughs> I'm blown away. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we can roll mm. with it. Winston, how are you doing? I couldn't be better. I'm I, so glad to hear that. I couldn't be better. So let me get straight into it. So I'm a great believer that I think the press like to make things look good for them and look make everybody else look bad. It's, a, it's called money. It mm. makes the, the world go round. So I'd like to hear your side of the story and some stuff and how you see things. So um, you've joined every major political party in the UK, never winning one. Well, why not give up? But I never joined Labour. Come on. You, <laughs> you said never joined Labour? You, I never joined Labour. Oh, wow. You said every major political party in the country, but I never joined Labour. It's not a case of me winning an election. It's right. a case of getting out there, meeting the power brokers, and helping the people. Okay. Can you think you've helped the people? Oh, I've helped countless people okay. into housing, schools, um, jobs, people sick in hospital. I've I've had, they've asked me to come along and, you know, talk with them and see over them. You know, I've done all this in all that time and mm. I know God has spared me and cut me out to do this work, the work that I'm doing. Okay. In 2010, you joined UKIP, became a candidate in 2012, you quit in 2015, allegedly saying racial discrimination. Marion, come here, we're getting serious now. Take care of that. <laughs> this is serious. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Tell me a bit about that. This, is that, I mean, the, allegedly they say racial discrimination that you left. You know. I, I, I joined UKIP in 2010. Um, Why join UKIP? No, I had a, it was an amazing experience. I had a phone call from Nigel Farage's office. Mm -hmm. Just an anonymous phone call. Right. We love you and our team. Okay. We've seen you, we've seen what you're all about. We love you on board with us. What did they let's, love? Let's fix up something with you, between you and Nigel. So what did they love? When they called you, when you had that anonymous phone call, what did they love about you? It was my, they said, your exuberance, your personality, you've got this, this thing about you. And on top of that, you know, you're, you're one of those black men who come over really well. Did that not make you think? Because you're the only black I know. I mean, I could be wrong. You have to correct me. Mm. You're the only black person I know that went to UKIP. Did that not make you think maybe there could be some of this? Because generally, let's be real, when they call us to do something like that, mm. we know there's a catch. Mm. We know there's something. They're going to make a mockery out of us. They're going to do something. What did you, uh, did you really think about the time? Donna, David Lent went in to the lion's den. Okay. He put his head in the lion's mouth. When UKIP got in touch with me, I was overjoyed, silently overjoyed, mainly because I knew that with these guys had to prove that they were non-racist and, and an all-inclusive party. Okay. Many people have them down as being a bunch of racists. I can't say that about the membership, but I know that the ruling establishment, mm. parts of the ruling establishment were distinctly racist. Okay. And I had to, I knew, you know, the Almighty told me, you've got to abide with this. You're not here for you, Mr. McKenzie. You're here for the people. And I noticed at the very top of politics, there was nobody like me. There right. were no black people coming through like me from my walk of life. So I abide with everything, I got on with people, and I made sure that doors were opened. And what doors were opened? Doors to finance, doors to the education system, doors to parliamentary protocol, doors to work. People, particularly the bankers, 
in UKIP. I never realised it. I just took it on board. These guys are politicians, you know. You didn't realise they were bankers. Their education. Well, the bankers uh, are the biggest... Uh, we know that's the biggest con system there is. So. Yes, but they were educating me. Right. And I, I was going into House of Lords, House of... Uh, and educating how, you for their own gain, not no, for, for our gain. I was gain, educated for... myself. Okay. I educated um, myself because I realised that working class black people don't really understand political protocol. I mean, how do you go about becoming an MP or a councillor? Or maybe knew. we don't want to be one. Well, I, think, I think, I mean, let me, mm. I think it's a different time. Now mm. you're having a lot of young people mm. coming through and wanting to join. Mm. In the time of yourself, there wasn't that case. And nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it because no. we, we believed that mm. they were never going to have our back. And there's some truth to that because mm. I, I think that they haven't got our backs. I, I commend but, you for always trying. Yeah, but that's what we're waiting for. People right. to have our backs. We have to have <laughs> our own, own backs. backs. Right? R okay. You know, um, and it's not a case of segregation. Uh, one thing I found in UKIP was how amenable. I knew what the game was. Right. Come right, on. Right, right. When I sat there with Nigel, and by the way, I got on so well with Nigel. Great guy. Fantastic guy. But when all is said and done, Nigel doesn't do his dirty work himself. He lets everybody <laughs> else do it. Yeah, but isn't this true that you even likened him to Jesus? Now, Come uh, on. Now that get said, out of here. Get no, out of here. It was Come allegedly on. said, Winston, Donna. that you likened... Donna. Done Nudge there. Farage to Jesus. This is why. Well, this is why. This oh, platform come here. on! I want to hear what you got to say. Donna, huh? the hat Donna. has come off. No, Donna, the hat has come off. Marianne, <laughs> control that. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, there is only one God, and I, he's he's a God of all of us. Did you not allow them to twist it? Because if you're going to use the word Jesus. And you're going to call... I said, Jesus is one man, right? Right, OK. And Jesus is one... The guy said to me, oh, Michael, Nigel Farage is only one man. I said, yes, so Jesus was only one man. So they what's edited the problem? it to, so they edited it you know, to make it sound like... So right. they turned it around and said, oh, he's compared N uh, Nigel Farage to Jesus. I've spent some time around you, and I know what your heart is. I just don't think people get to see that side of you. My heart um, is for people. It's for and, people. And I know that. And, and yeah. I know that. And I think that we need to know. But, you know, we have to address some of these things. In yes. 2010, I know that you've done a carnival in Croydon. There's two points I want to come to. Yeah. Yes, you allegedly meant to have said about Croydon being a dump and yeah. unsafe. It was. So, so is it true you and said I'll tell that? You, I'll tell you, if you had a friend, imagine you woke up one day. This was one week before this all happened. Imagine you woke up one day and um, you, you, you had a... You heard that uh, a, a good friend of yours had been chopped up mm. right in your vicinity mm. and put into a dustbin. Is that what you meant by that term? Yeah. It's a shame people don't really understand politics and what's going on and why I'm involved in UKIP and things like that. They haven't got a clue. And there was none of us there. But then to hear that had happened to a friend of yours, had that just happened, hence you making that comment? It had happened a, f a few weeks back. OK, so but there was the a lot on. Uh, I was, I was, it was like a bereavement. Of course. And, and, to, uh, and the, the officer said, Nick, you know, after we found him. It's the worst murder I've ever seen, the guy said. Right. And I couldn't help thinking what a great guy the guy he was and mm -hmm. uh, always seeing me. Doesn't matter where I am in South Northern High Street, he crossed over Winston, how you doing, right. man? You know, and, um, you know, I mean, he's a white guy, mm. great guy, Scottish guy, like, you know? So uh, I was grieving, and I thought, Croydon has become a total dump. Right. You know, they came up, they interviewed me, asked me various aspects of Croydon, and I wanted the world to know that the people of Croydon had been disenfranchised. Right. And look where we are now, Donna. We We're finally. Uh, okay, they're saying. I, I mean, I stopped a lady in the street yesterday. I said, "Did you hear about that young boy who'd been stabbed up the road? Has he died? Did he die?" Oh no, she said, "He, he didn't die." I said, "Excuse me." Hmm. And I walked off in disgust. So her, her idea is because he didn't die, it it's doesn't a, matter. matter. It's okay to have all this stabbing and killing, you know. And that's something that we also know that you're that you are very passionate about is you have a charity that you are Goldspun. 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 And what's that about? What is that charity about? Because I know you're very thing about your gun and knife crime is very much. It's it's about community, Donna. I'm a community man. I I, I lead from the heart. 
Mm. I've lived it. I've seen it. I understand it. Mm. Today's politicians don't understand it. It's all about the money with mm. them. But they've allowed the si situation, our social activities, our, the way we live socially, to willfully dilapidate. It's dilapidated. And we've gone down rock bottom until the, the youth have finally become nocturnal. They've turned in on themselves. Yeah. And began to hurt each other and hurt themselves. So the charity, the charity is going to address what government hasn't bothered to address for years. There's lots of sort of different independent people that have been fighting a lot of these crimes in the community. I know because I'm, I'm head of one of them, father to father. There's lots of us that are doing little things out there. That's um, my point. And, and yeah. we have to come together and do things. Yes. Um, yeah. So what difference do you think you're making? I want people, our people, especially our people, to stop criticizing, stop moaning, stop crying, get out there and join me and join others. We as a people, this isn't a black-white thing, this isn't some racist thing, this is me appealing to the people, working class people, to get out there and get involved. When I say get involved, look, ask yourself, instead of criticizing what parties I've joined or what I'm doing, ask yourself, what have I done for me lately? I understand it's not, you're saying it's not a race thing, yeah. but there are things that are very much divide. There are very yeah. much things that black people that are suffering that are different for everybody else. Um, and we do need to fight that. You're, sometimes you can come across as very much of a showman. Oh yeah, which, I love that. Uh, don't get me wrong, well, at least that. you're honest. I prefer that, you're <laughs> honest sure, about it. I'm showbiz, I love that. Yeah, and I get it, you're, you're showbiz. <laughs> but I, can, I also know that you've got a heart. Now talk about the showbiz part. You went into Big Brother in 2016. <laughs> Why did Nancy, you go there? Nancy, no, Nancy, why Mario. did you go? Nancy, I'm still spying on you. <laughs> why? No, no. The lady called me, she said to me, can you, um, we want you for Big Brother, Mr. McKenzie. We've seen you on BBC News last night. You were fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, really? <laughs> I said, oh, really? Uh, I was, how much are you going to pay me? Well, come up and we'll, t we'll, have a we'll talk about it. I said, oh, I'm coming. I don't want no more than 100 grand. Right. I went on Big Brother, uh, I left my son. And didn't you, didn't you really oh. give him something to talk about? Oh, right. Now, now tell me, <laughs> now tell us the real deal because there's things, we know they edit things. Yeah. And uh, they edit things in a certain way. Yeah. How was it for you in Big Brother? Because obviously there was quite a few I, things I that was happened. The, I was like the outcast in Big Brother. We all began to get on very well. I got on very well with Tiffany Pollard. Pollard actually, I fancied her. She was so sexy. <laughs> No. You're right. She was voluptuous like you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, she was. She was. You know, when I say working your brain on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. working her brain on me to get in with the producers. You know. Mm. So anyway, we got on well for a while, and then um, they was using her to get around me. You know, mm. and I, I just kept. So the chemistry is quite strong between it you. So strong. they used it. It was strong. So they, they cottoned on what was happening and they used it. I had a great time in Big Brother. Right. I didn't get on with everybody, but I kept. Well, it. that's what it's there for. Big Brother's there for. And there was quiet. another situation yeah. for you in Big Brother, I think, where they had. Uh, there was another situation. Oh, you mean about the gays and this and that? No, 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 no. Oh. There was another situation with another woman. I thought there was. Oh, Nancy. That's it. Good old Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Yes. Oh well, I, I was. You know, I admit, I do like a beautiful woman. Though. So, if the offer was on again, would you go back in Big Brother? Offer money, yeah. Are you worth? Oh yeah, of course. It so, it, look, so now, are you really? I'm about... not. I'm not a rich man. People see me. I was going to say to you because because obviously we'd see you and think you got money because obviously you came from having a pub. You see, I think that's yeah. amazing. You're a former yeah. boxer. Yeah. You came from having a pub, yeah. you know, with your brothers, and you've always got the swagger. So yeah. we would always perceive that you've got money, and it sounds like you love money. Money seems to be your god. Donna, I haven't got a pot to piss in or winter to throw it out of. Okay. That's how bad things are. Okay. Yeah. But and as I take you do, we make day, it look each good. Each day as it comes. Okay. My father was a great man who I love and respect dearly. And even now he's gone, I still feel his spirit with me. Totally. And I, I am just a better model than what he was because he groomed me to right. be the man I am today. Mm. And I love him so much. But then 
he always taught me, boy, it doesn't matter how bad things are. Mm -hmm. If you work in a factory, if you're sweeping the dustbin, mm -hmm. put on your suit. Yeah, yeah, put on your suit. Look good, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? People don't have to know your business, mm -hmm. right? If you're going down the road, just a hundred yards down the road, he used to tell my, my sister, put on your dress. You look good. And don't let me see you look like, you said, but dad, I only went to the sweet shop. How people see you is what they perceive. And in saying that, wasn't there a time where you was homeless for a bit, Am I, if I'm correct? Well, I ran the Croydon Youth Games, a mini Olympics for the youth of Greater London, off my own back. Wow. I went to Croydon Council. I asked Croydon Council if they would um, um, put up 10,000 pounds to add to the 20,000 pounds that I had to help me to run the games because we get sponsorship from other little groups. Mm -hmm. And they said, yes, no problem. They ran up calling me a racist. They, made, they concocted some story that I had no, um, no, I only took on, I only took on my own blacks and Asians and Indians. This always but, happens. Uh, and I wasn't taking on any white children. This always happens, but yet on the other way around, they do this all the time. If you turn on the television right now, if you can count five black people on each channel yeah, for yeah. the day, you'll be oh, lucky. You're lucky, you're lucky. Yeah. You so know? it's been, well, I, when we go you know, to do Donna, it, it's a problem. I took on every creed, every color, every race, hundreds of medals were won. The Croydon Advertiser continually put me down. Croydon Council continually put me down. Everything I put my hand to, as far as they're concerned, it's a flop, it's a failure, it didn't <clears> work, <throat> you know? And I found out one day that it wasn't so much because of my colour or creed, it was more because of my political persuasion. Right, how, how you the Tories, The Tories told me. But, you, you know? but in saying that, even though they tried to put you down, what, didn't children and mothers go up to Croydon Council and say, actually, you're actually wrong? He's... Oh, yes, they did. The, 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 the kids are wonderful. They wrote some wonderful letters to say, we thank Mr Mackenzie and Marianne Bonus. Oh, we get on to Marianne in a minute. <laughs> right. Marianne Bonus, you know, um, for their wonderful youth education opportunity program. The parents wrote in to condemn the council and the Croydon advertiser for, for acting so despicably. There, right. we, there we are talking about the, the, the knife crime at the time, mm -hmm. which is why I created the games. Instead of getting involved in, 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 in enjoying and enjoying what's going right. on and helping, they, they're just ridiculing everything I do. I mean, I had the streets closed down uh -huh. uh, to, for the bike cycle race. And look how fantastic road racing is today with cyclists. And this is what year? This was way, this was, what's the? 2004, no, something like no, that? 2006. Okay. So, 2006, 2007. So yeah. you, the council gave you some money. Did the council give you a lot? Did they give you some at money? At the last minute, at the last minute, Croydon Council cancelled the ten thousand pound grant they were I was due to get. Wow! I cried tears. So that I, means everything would have been cancelled. Cancelled, if not. I had all these young children and their mums all been gearing up, looking forward to the games, and they cancelled because of race discrimination. And they came the last minute, which they never had no intention so what of I done, to, basically. So what I had to do, I had a good friend um, who was into mortgages and that, and I remortgaged my home. For, for the event? For the event. And I got for it, the people? For the people. Okay. I remortgaged my home for the people. I got, I couldn't cancel it, it was amazing. What a great show I was putting on. So I had to, and I couldn't go to the banks, I couldn't go to um, a proper loan company, so I had to go to um, a loan shark. Right. And who, until this day, I'm still paying. Uh, I borrowed 10,000, but I'm, I'm, I'm 30 grand in, I was, 30 grand in debt. And this then led you to be homeless? And led me, I, I became homeless. I came home one day to find all my bags and everything in my house on the street. They, they, it was all on the pavement. The bailiffs had been, they moved everything out of my house in South Croydon. And um, had it not been for the likes of the, our local builder, Don Smith, what a great man. He's not that well in that at the moment. And I'll take my hat off to you, Don, and I thank you so much for giving me a little place to stay for those times. He didn't charge me rent at all until I could manage. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Smith. I thank you with all my heart. Uh, had it not been for Mr. Smith, you know, um, I would have had nowhere to live. But mm. prior to me getting hold of Don, 
You know, I was walking around the streets for ages. ages. Nobody even, I had a beard, nobody, and a dirty tracksuit, nobody and recognized no paid, me. No, nobody recognized they me. They didn't recognize me. I was, my wife had left, um, my, my eldest son had gone, and I was broken. Hmm. And I feel it today. But, but that's what makes you the person you are. Yeah. You've gone through those experiences. Yeah. So the charity now yeah. is called Goldspun. Goldspun. Tell me a bit about Goldspun. Well, Goldspun was um, formed between Marianne Boness and myself. And Marianne Boness, as I keep mentioning, is the she's the former mayoress of Croydon. Okay. And she was a Tory, once married to Lord Peter Boness. Mm. And we're lifelong friends. Uh, when my brothers and I became well, when my brother Duke became champion of the world, mm. um, with the Mackenzie family were honoured in Croydon, mm. and both Marianne and her husband arranged um, for us to have a, a real parade. Okay. So, so um, the friendship is, is the long. Friendship. She's been, She's been there, right there, working with me, and that through thick and thin, uh, and, and never forgotten. You know. Um, so the the charity. Yes. So the so charity. Not the charity. So we we we, we fell into politics done this, that and the other, until finally um, we began to draw more and more to, to charity than anything else because I could, after, after lecturing in schools, nobody paid me, you know, nobody paid me. I had to keep myself. Lecturing in schools, I saw just how badly the youth were doing, right? And I decided I'd hold the youth games and then, and then I'd launch this charity. And now I've launched Goldsman, and it will launch on the 6th of October at the Waldorf Hilton Hotel. Goldspun will target the youth mm. in particular. It will do what our governments are not, not doing, doing for us. Okay. They're talking about stop and search. For God's sake, give the, the youth of this country back what you've taken from them. Mm. Everybody wants to put their money into stop and search. It's, we want to target the money. They've got to target the money. They've got to target the money into, into the, the, the things that are needed. Mm. And, which, and what in your eyes are needed? Education, mm -hmm. sport, housing, employment. Mm. And music, mm. cookery lessons, mm. they've taken so much away from society, politicians. It's easy to turn around and say, let's pump um, 20 million, 40 million, 50 million into policing, stop and search. You can't police your way out of gun and knife crime. You can't police your way out of it. Give the youth back what you've taken from them. So right? your charity, Aims to aim that money to help within that. We've circle. got girl guides. We've got fire, um, the, the fire service on, on board. Fire cadets, police cadets, army cadets. We've got boxing clubs, judo clubs, um, scouts, girl guides. All these things are so dilapidated. We're going to give out grants. We're going to give out bursaries. We're going to give out loans. We're going to. Oh, build apprenticeships. We're going to do all the things and we, we've already begun. It's not as though I'm starting today. We've already begun. Right. We've already begun to dish out what we can and it's going to get better. We've got a massive organisation behind us. And, and this that's is the why. 6th of October. 6th of October. At the Ward of Hotel. Get a ticket and come and see what I'm doing. And come all and, the details will be down below anyway. So all the, fine. yeah. Uh, come and see what I'm doing. I, I'm going to change lives. We're going to turn it all around. Winston McKenzie, it's been amazing speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. I love you. Are you, are you married? I'm about to be married. Tell your Wait. husband <laughs> I'm jealous of him. <laughs> Thank you very much. There you have it. We have Winston McKenzie. Born. Thank you. And he's still singing. What can you say? By the river <laughs> in a little tent. A little old tent. Oh, and just <laughs> back like the, the river, river I've, I've been, been running, running ever since. <laughs> Sunday, the 6th of October, the Goldspun Foundation will launch their charity event. I'm very much involved in that. We'd like you to come along. Prosecco, canapes, an amazing entertainment. Come along, get ready, 
get down, get with it. This is serious. This is about what you can do for yourselves and how we can help you. Get down to the Waldorf Hotel on the 6th of October. Don't miss this event. This event will be from 4.30 until 7.30. Help abate gun and knife crime. The youths have turned in on themselves. They've become nocturnal. Help save a life. Come along and join us. Let's make this happen. Let's do this.